I'd like to know, you, you have many platforms you speak at, and you are the one who's championing the, the cause that Kenya is going to be different. Kenya is, uh, we are going to have a state that uh, is just completely uh, unlike what we have right now, and you're the one who pushes the vision of uh, saying, it says that you say, to help transform Kenya into a middle-income country, providing a health, high-quality life to all its citizens by the year 2030. What's your motivation? Well, my motivation is very really simple. It's just to change Kenya. Hmm. But I need to know, how many of you have been in a fourth-class anything? Fourth-class train? Courage, fourth class flight, fourth class uh, matatu, anything. Restaurant. Anybody, has anybody ever, ever had a ticket that says fourth class? Ticket. What was it? No, not economy. Has any of you held a ticket that says fourth class? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. Because the lowest class is always third class. Third class, mm-hmm. Now, you know we are all third world. And that's really third class. <laughs> and below third class is nothing. So, when you ask me what is my motivation, mm. I grew up in a third world country. Mm. I grew up saying I live in a third world country. I come from a third world country. I am from a third world society. Mm. And I grew up listening to all of us, many of you are younger than I am, but even people who are older than me, saying, talking about being third world, almost mm. proudly, mm. without shame. And yet, there's nothing about being third world or being third class to write home about. Mm. It means poor infrastructure, poor education, poor health facilities, terrible environment, bad driving. That's what it means to be third world. Mm. And so we must, con in concerted effort, work together to move away from being third world. And that is something that I think I'll be doing for the rest of my life. Yeah. Not necessarily under Vision 2030, mm -hmm. whatever it is. The day I, really, I leave Vision 2030, I will be working towards making sure this country is no longer a third class society. And we've begun the journey yeah. as we mm -hmm. speak. Mm -hmm. And I need people to know that the journey has started. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of whether you're going to be part of the people who are in it, making it happen, or on the sidelines watching mm -hmm. and letting you pass by. Uh, but for me, ensuring that we have better education, better health facilities, better infrastructure, which is what it means to have a better quality of life for anybody who is born in any part of this country. Okay. Any part, not just Rongai. Mm. You could be born in Turkana, oil or no oil, Lamu, Kilifi, wherever it is you're born. Mm. You ought to have access to certain basic social amenities like mm. education and health, clean environment, water, shelter, without much difficulty. Yeah. And that's what Vision 2030 aims to do. Tell me, what are you seeing on that end? Give us, give us a teaser of what that actually looks like. Now, being in third world, as we, we have been described, if we do not know anything else, we are dependent on people who have a picture of what the future looks like um, so that we can be able to latch onto that. Mm. I'm gonna ask you to give us that picture, Sam. Um, that's a treat of what would it look like when you can sit back and say, yeah, Vision 2030 has been achieved and accomplished, what would that look like? You know, I like to give a story, right? And that story is about a young girl, mm. right, who's um, in college. And she's probably about uh, 19 years old. She's a first year. And her name is actually irrelevant. Whether her name is Zainabu or Nkirote or Achieng, whatever, it is irrelevant what her name is. Mm. What is relevant is that she's 19 years old, she's a first year college student, and she's a Kenyan girl. And she is in college at university in Lodwa, it could be. It could be Moyale, it could be Ganze, but it's a university college she's in. And she's just finished um, a, a long day's work, it's about midnight. Okay, and mm. the story that I call, I call that story coffee at midnight because she's had a long day. She now wants to call it quits. She wants to have a cup of coffee. She doesn't have a caffeine problem, mm. like many of people do, mm. before she goes to sleep. And so she says, you know what? She orders um, coffee at the local shop, coffee mm. shop nearby. 
in Moyale. In Moyale, it could be Lord or Coffee. Ganze or Lunga Lunga, right? <laughs> and okay. and so she says, okay, fine. So she she you know she, before she shuts down her iPad. Mm. In Moyale. Yeah. <laughs> At midnight. She makes an order mm. on her iPad to the local coffee shop. And they immediately respond. She gets an automatic response that uh, 10 minutes it will be ready. Mm. And she decides, okay, 10 minutes. Uh, well, I have a few minutes. So she decides, you know what? Uh, my grandfather, um, rather my great-grandfather, uh, just passed on a few weeks ago and he bequeathed me an apartment. Uh, let me 